Okay, we have in the studios former federal lawmaker Bamdele Fakbarusi, uh, who is also a member of the Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressives uh, Congress, as well as a rights analyst and rights lawyer, Frank Tieti. Gentlemen, very warm welcome uh, to Newsnight. Maybe I would uh, just start with you, Frank, uh, because. Uh, uh, you, we, we know that uh, Bami Dele uh, is partisan here, being an APC person, so I will restrict all APCs, uh, all conversations with him to that of APC while you handle uh, the controversy. Still rocking the People's Democratic Party. Do you see um, a light at the end of the tunnel as, uh, you know, the G5 uh, governors, uh, they are called the rebels in the PDP, are saying, and as well as the intervention by former uh, military President uh, General uh, Babangida with Atiku's visit. Any hope for, you know, a new beginning in PDP, Frank? I do not uh, see that uh, hope and I don't share in that uh, kind of optimism or else there will be a lot of confusion. Um, okay, so uh, Governor Nelson Wiki has uh, uh, pushed one argument that if uh, Atiku Abubakar and uh, and, and Iocha, you cannot keep to promises when they are yet to be elected. Is it when they were, I mean, is it when Atiku becomes president that he will keep to the such promises? So th that has earned Wiki and, and the G5 entirely with, uh, with a lot of uh, in integrity and uh, followership. So what is now the middle ground they are settling for? that uh, the, the grant stood the PDP for all this long to settle for something quite nebulous. Uh, I think Wiki will have a whole lot to lose. The G5 will have engaged in uh, a very frivolous and unnecessary adventure in, in dragging the Atiku Abubakar and the PDP for, for all of these months. Uh, I think that uh, it's quite unlikely. If I can predict uh, the wiki and the autumns and the way they carry, they've carried on, they may not, they, they are finding it difficult now because they are unable to actually pitch their tent uh, anywhere at this time. So are they going to lick their wounds? Are they going to uh, come back to Atiku begging? Would they have lost? I, I, I don't think so. These are men that will remain resolute. However, the, the introduction of the very important personality of General Ibrahim Babangida, it's a, it's, it's a very interesting dimension. Mina has become a political mecca. Uh, everybody needs to go there to seek one blessing or the other. Atiku has finally gone, and what he has gone to seek is uh, that the general will use his uh, influence to weigh in on uh, Wiki and uh, the G5 generally. <laughs> I don't think that Wiki might fall for that. If he does, he will be losing quite a lot in terms of influence. Well, Tiete, you say you're not optimistic, but the fact that during the course of the week, Wiki himself, while he was in Belchit State, had actually spoken about the fact that they are open to continue talking so that way they, you know, work together as a team, speaking about the PDP. Because let's not forget, Wiki is the only one who is not seeking um, any political position come 2023. The rest of the G5, some of them seeking a second term, especially the governor of Oyo State, but others seeking a senatorial place. Of course, all flag bearers on the platform of the PDP. But let's move away from the PDP and talk to Bamdele, who is in the studio talking about the APC, whose own house have got its own troubles. Bamdele, what exactly is going on with the APC, especially in River State? Um, just a fortnight ago, the court had actually disqualified or even ruled out that you don't even have a candidate, speaking about the candidacy of Tonya Cole. And now, all tickets under the APC for House of Assembly. All that, again, has been thwarted by the court. What is going on? And where's the place of internal conflict mechanism in your party to resolve this issue so we're not troubling the courts with all of them? Uh, well, um, from the report just read out now, uh, we can see that uh, uh, it was the PDP that was actually playing judicial politics uh, by going to court to see how they can notify the candidates of uh, the APC, uh, I mean the House of Assembly candidates. So um, the party have made their statement that uh, that uh, court judgment will be, will be um, appealed uh, until Supreme Court. So 
is still work in progress. I mean, some people like to pass through the back door um, to, to, to gain political office, and this is part of it. I mean, it's part of the politicking, people using judicial uh, machinery, loopholes here and there to, to have their way in politics. So I want to believe that it's not really an internal crisis, especially for the House of Assembly issue, because the, the litigant is between the PDP, who actually challenged the, that uh, the APC does not follow due process. Uh, so I don't know what their interest is. I'm sure the appeal uh, court will definitely uh, rule against that ju judgment. Now, even in Abia State, it's not all Uhuru there. Abia State? Yes. Uh, Abia in State. In regards to your gubernatorial uh, candidate. Yes, it's still, it's, still, it's still part of the process. It's a process when, during the primaries, there, there, there may be probably bridge of the process that... Uh, um, uh, any aggrieved member of the party has the right to, to challenge in court. Uh, either, either he or B is still going to be APC flying the flag. So uh, the, the candidate that the court pronounced as the authentic candidate will definitely fly the, the flag of the party. So the party is one, though the interests may differ among uh, people aspiring for offices. Um, I think that is not... Uh, that should not be a cause for alarm. It's because the party has the capacity to deliver its kind. That's why people are very desperate to, to get the party's ticket. So, uh, I mean, that is where we have the court to arbitrate on this kind of uh, misunderstanding within the party. So, we are party of process and we, we want to stick to the process and we surely believe in judiciary to do what is right in the interest of the people of the country. All right, doing what is right in the interest of the people. But uh, some uh, Nigerians and uh, followers would uh, say that the problem of eternal democracy uh, is still making Nigeria's uh, democratic uh, movement slow, if not so slow, until it gets to, you know, a matured stage. Uh, Frank, Tete. Let's look at PDP again, and uh, you aren't uh, optimistic at all about uh, a quick fix or resolution of the eternal crisis there. And we hear from feelers that the NEC and NWC of the party will be meeting very, very, in a few days' time, and may come down with a uh, sledgehammer or with a heavy hammer on uh, those engaging in anti-party activities. Would that, is that capable of resolving the imbroglio uh, that is currently, uh, that's currently engulfed the PDP? Certainly not. The PDP NWC will never try such a thing. If it could have done that, it would have done it long time ago without allowing these uh, G5 governors to gain this particular traction they now have this influence which they may likely lose if they chip in their resolve so quickly and allow and then just merge into the article campaign train. They have cost the party a lot of uh, uh, distress. Uh, they, they, they actually deserve to be punished. However, uh, the party has, the PDP has been quite uh, sensitive to realize that any attempt to uh, wield the big stick against these G5 governors will be counterproductive and will actually make the PDP, give them a, a ground to work against the PDP. And these are persons who actually can determine the fate of the PDP in the coming elections. So I, I, uh, yeah, I completely, with moral humility, rule out the possibility of applying any punitive sanctions against uh, uh, Wiki and his G5 uh, uh, cohorts. I don't think that will happen. What is expected is that uh, the, the, both parties, particularly the, the, the G5 governors and Governor uh, Wike himself, may just be looking out for an excuse to, uh, I mean, probably that's the, they might allude to the visit or the, the involvement of General Ibrahim Babangida as being the ground for which they may just uh, give any concession to the party and allow sleeping dogs to lie. But like I, mean, like I said earlier, if they do that, uh, they, they will lose a whole lot of influence. Wiki particularly will lose a lot of influence because his, his popularity across the country uh, is based on the fact that he's a man who, st who has stood on, 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 the, on principles to oppose his own party 
the opposed Atiku Abubakar and the National Party chairman. Uh, if he now decides to, on a flimsy ground, or on one uh, cheap promise of a political appointment for an election that has not yet come, for an election that his party is not so certain of winning, the APC is a formidable political party with incumbential powers. The PDP has a real lot of work to do. So why would we here and the G5 governors go to the extent of, work, of punishing their own party the way they have done, only for them to just come and quickly just resolve the matter? Something has to come out in the favor of Nigerians, as Wiki has claimed all this wide, or else it would have been politics taken too far. The game, the game, using the mask of principles to actually, you know, work at anti-party activities. Then the punishment might just be justified. But I doubt if the PDP will ever have the courage to move against the uh, G5 governors. It will not happen. I predict. Well, you predict so, but you're saying uh, that uh, this uh, solution is looking like a quick fix. Let's not forget that uh, the primaries where we get lost to Atiku Abubakar happened back in March of this year. It's been too long, some would say. And the fact that they've not been able to find a way out of that on pass might just, you know, um, say something about the party. But uh, let's move along from there and bring in Bamidele into this conversation. Well, I was speaking of Atiku. Well, he's actually make, uh, made some statements with regards to um, security. Well, he says that um, when he becomes president, that if he's elected by Nigerians, he's vowing to restore the economic community of West African states monitoring group ECOMOG as one of, you know, the solutions to the insecurity currently bedeviling Nigeria. I want to talk to you about your principle. What exactly are his plans uh, for Nigerians to deal with the insecurity prop bedeviling every corner of the country today? Thank you very much. Um, really, I'm not a security expert. From, but I'm from, talking about the plans that yes, you have for Nigerians yes, to come 2023. Yes, from, from his manifesto, we, we, we can see that uh, Ashua Juhamed Tinubu has a laid down plan to actually um, uh, build on what uh, President Mohamedou Buhari has, uh, has done in terms in the area of security. Yes, we have security challenges across the country. Uh, kidnapping and, uh, and, and banditry, uh, which was uh, as a result of uh, um, the, the, the heavy blow the, the, the administration dealt on uh, the Boko Haram insurgents, which has uh, made them to come in, 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 into the mainland to begin to terrorize the people. Um, Mr. President, uh, incoming president, I call him, uh, has said that uh, first and foremost, the food soldier of Nigeria is not enough to cover the, 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 the length and breadth of this country. We, 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 have, we have short men in the, in the service, and he has promised that he's going to recruit more soldiers, 2 million Nigerian youth, to take away from the recruitment center of the terrorists. So that is one of his strategy that he has laid out in his plan, and that will also create employment for people. And he also said that that will also create um, uh, 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 I mean, uh, more, uh, especially to enhance agricultural um, uh, um, uh, um, strategy that is coming up. Like, for example, he said the old Sambiza forest will be turned to agricultural hub. Therefore, it will, it will sniff the, the terrorists at an abode that they use to terrorize the country. And by so doing, more food will be produced to take care of these soldiers that we, Nigeria is going to, is going to, is going to, is going to uh, hire. Then, aside, aside that, he's also talking about using technology. Yes, I think we we'll talk about ECOMOG. ECOMOG uh, was, was to tackle war that happened in the country. That will not, that will not uh, attend to the issue of insecurity in Nigeria as of today, because more, most of the problems are internal, they are not external. So, using technology will enhance the, the fight against, against uh, insecurity in Nigeria and uh, the incoming president, uh, that, uh, uh, Senator Tinumbu, I assure you, Ahmed Bola Tinumbu, has said that he will use technology and it will increase the men uh, of, the Niger of the armed forces to actually tackle the insecurity in this, in this country. Well, it's all right, uh, Honorable Bamidele. Uh, Ekomog was uh, an, uh, an external force raised then during uh, President uh, Babangida's uh, era to fight uh, the internal strives in Syria alone and Liberia. 
uh, that almost uh, that uh, engulfed those two countries. But let's uh, look at uh, another party that uh, some people say, uh, political watchers say, is beginning to make great phenomenon, the Labour Party. Look at its campaign in three states in 72 hours and really not limiting it to state capitals, but going to other major cities and towns. How are you going to appraise uh, the campaigns of the political parties generally and use the Labour Party to underscore what uh, the expectations are from Nigerians? Frank? All right. You know, th that report just reminded me of... Uh, the famous uh, German Blitzkrieg during the Second World War, the idea of lightning cam uh, campaigns, that is uh, a, a sort of shuttle, shuttling between uh, uh, one state and the other, and including uh, cities. That's a, a very smart approach on the part of the uh, Labour Party. And I think that it, it did that in, in, in a record time of just 72 hours. It's quite impressive. And, and, and then, uh, the, the particularly very impressive is the show in uh, Edo State, which I'm very familiar with. To think that uh, the uh, obedience, in quote, kept on, kept on in a sort of uh, patiently waiting in a vigil to uh, awaiting obese delay in whatever uh, places he had gone to uh, until eventually they got to that uh, point of denouement. Uh, it was quite electric and uh, ecstatic for them. Uh, it also reminded me of how much that city supported uh, the uh, Adam Soshomale at that time uh, when he contested for governor and eventually won. They are very, uh, pol there are a lot of political enthusiasts in Benin City. Uh, Edo State, Edo State, I am from Delta State and I can tell you that we acknowledge that there is, the, the, the Edo State is uh, highly politically advanced uh, as, as, a peop uh, as a people and a state. And, the, the, and that's what they exhibited in the way they responded to the OB campaign in Benin City. Right. Well, Obi has been uh, combing almost every part of Nigeria, taking his campaign to all across, especially after he kicked off in Nasara State. Bambi Dila, as we get ready to wrap up this conversation, well, um, your principal, Tinubu, um, did unveil his manifesto on the 22nd of October. Yes, there has been an announcement that the campaigns will kick off, I think, on the 15th of this month. Can you confirm to us that that date still suffices or... Should Nigerians just wait until that day to see if maybe there's a postponement, which is what we've seen uh, in recent times with regard to your campaign activities? Uh, I'm not I'm not the spokesperson for the well, you're campaign. Of that presidential campaign yes, council. but I can assure you that uh, Tuesday is sacrosanct. Uh, everyone is already moving to JOS, and uh, every preparation is is uh, top gear in JOS, uh, where the flag off will, will, will take place. And uh, we are inviting Nigerians to, to join us and to hook up to their television stations on Tuesday, where the, the campaign will officially uh, uh, kick start. And uh, to talk about the campaign, uh, our strategy, yes, may, may be differ from what you just rolled out that Labour Party is doing. Um, I mean, we are decentralizing this campaign. With the campaign, we have different, different teams that are already uh, working around the clock across the length and breadth of this country to engage the people. So the candidates are moving around and we the supporters, we the, we the foot soldiers are also moving around uh, to, to carry out the campaign because the president himself cannot reach out the nook and cranny of this country. Uh, we have to do what, what, what campaign, local government campaign, state campaign. I'm sure the president will be able to do state campaigns and uh, the, uh, the several teams have been set up to do local government campaigns, teams have been set up to do what campaign, even to the unit campaign, where the votes it will, be, will be counted. So, I um, mean, the structure is, is massive for APC and the structure is a, is a moving, is a moving campaign, campaign machine that, uh, that no party in Nigeria can withstand. Hmm. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, nice you drop the anchor there. Uh, Bami Dele Fakbarusi, a former national legislator, uh, legislator with the House of Representatives and a member of the uh, All Progressives Congress uh, Presidential Campaign Council. Thanks for joining us on Newsnight. And of course, a rights analyst and rights activist, Frank Tiete. Gentlemen, thanks for being part of Newsnight. <music>